Hello and welcome back to Crafted by Corey. If you're new, I'm Corey. Welcome to my channel. If you are returning, thank you as always for being here. You all mean the world to me. I was so inspired when I was creating these projects. I'm going to tell you a little bit why, and I am going to need your opinion on something. So stay tuned and let's go ahead and get right on into the crafting. DIY number one. I have some dowels from the Dollar Tree, as well as these wood pallets, I'm gonna call them, from Plaid. I think they're awesome. They came in a pack of three. We're gonna be using two of them. I also have this little wooden tray from Michaels and these finials from Bed Bath & Beyond. They were on clearance for $5.99 and then 70% off that. So it was like $1.50 for those two finials. I've had these in my stash for a while, really excited to finally be using them but i am applying some wood glue to my dowels i started to put it in the corners of the um, palette there for lack of a better term um, and then decided to apply them up to, oh my goodness to apply it directly to the dowels I was a little tongue tied there for a minute, um, but went ahead and got those situated. And while they were drying, I applied a little bit of hot glue just to make sure that they weren't gonna go anywhere because you could see that I was having a little trouble bumping them and knocking them over. So I wanted to make sure that they weren't gonna go anywhere. So then I flipped that over and I prepped the other wood palette. What would you call that? I don't even know what that's really called. Is it a wood canvas I don't know but at any rate you saw that I applied some more wood glue and set my dowels down in there as well so now I'm going to take the Michaels um, little wood box here and I created a template for the bottom of it and I'm folding it in half and then in quarters and then I'm going to fold it in, in like a triangle shape on the diagonal. I'm just trying to find the center of my square. So I'm going to put my little pattern down there. I've got my center. I'm going to take a nail and I'm going to knock that in through the pattern so I know exactly where my center is. Drilling a hole there because I'm going to apply my finial. So I'm just gonna screw this right in. I did look to see if maybe I could just take that screw out and I, it looked like there wasn't really a good way to do it. So I figured, you know what, I'll work with it. I'm gonna apply some more wood glue on the underside of it just to make sure that it's nice and secure. I suppose I could have used the bolt that came with it, but that didn't occur to me until just right this moment. <laughs> so I used glue and that worked just fine. But I went ahead and then applied it to the top of my lantern. Everything was dry at this point. And I, except for some of that glue on the underside of this one, as you can see, but I'm just applying a little teeny tiny bit of glue along here because I don't want it to ooze out on me. So applying this to the top, and then I'm going to spray paint everything with this heirloom white, and I am already loving this. I also grabbed one of these candle holders from the Dollar Tree. I spray painted that the same color. It was originally black, put a bunch of hot glue under there to secure it, and now I have these flowers that I'd gotten in a grab box from Michaels and that Amazon um, ribbon I'm going to call it leaf ribbon it's like a ribbon but it's in the shape of leaves and I think it's so pretty but I'm going to pull apart all my picks I'm going to cut all the ends off and I'm going to arrange these around the base of my lantern now while I am doing that I'm going to tell you why I was so inspired for these projects I was asked to create some centerpieces or tablescapes for the Lambertville Area Education Foundation. Um, for those of you who've been following me for a while, you know I live in Lambertville, New Jersey, and the Area Education Foundation, which is a nonprofit organization that helps support our local school system, um, they asked me to create something for a fundraising event that they're going to be having. It's their biggest event, I believe, of the year. It's something that they do annually and they have a live auction and they have a silent auction and they asked me to create this so I decided I was going to create four different tablescapes or centerpieces and I would love for you to vote and tell me which one of these I should donate to the Lambert 
Lambertville Area Education Foundation, or we refer to it as the LAEF. So it's a little bit easier to say. So as you watch, please keep in mind that one of these will get donated and I would really love your thoughts on which one it should be. And uh, the one with the most votes is going to get donated. So please, please let me know your thoughts on that. But I am loving this. Once I had all those flowers set around the base, I'm coming in with the ribbon. I'm going to call it ribbon because it is, it's like a fabric. It, it's like a ribbon. It is not wired. It is just um, flat, I guess you would call it. Um, but at any rate, I wrapped it around my little post. And I'm sorry, it's hard to see from this angle. I need to work with my camera angles again. But I used a little bit of hot glue at the top underneath the little top to secure it. And then I wrapped it, wrapped it, wrapped it. And then I secured it at the bottom. Let me know what you think. DIY number two. I have these um, wreath rings that I picked up from Walmart. I also have this wooden tray and some tumbling tower blocks. That wooden tray had come in a pack of five off of Amazon. If you recall, I made a tiered tray with three of them. Um, I think it was five for $25, something like that, but they are available in my Amazon store if that's of interest to you. And the link for that is in my description box. I wired together the three rings and I'm using a little bit of my Star Bond super glue along with the accelerator. Once you spray that stuff on, it uh, makes the, it cures the glue instantly. It's amazing. <laughs> I've never seen anything like it, but I went ahead and did that on both sides. I wanted to make sure that this was going to be really super stable. If you've been following me for a while, you might recall a project that I did over the holidays that was similar to this. This is going to be a spring version and I have learned from experience and I am going to make sure that this one is uh, a little bit more secure because the one that I made at Christmas time, I felt like it was a little bit, uh, I don't want to say flimsy, but I, it was a little wobbly on the top. So. As you can see, I'm using my tumbling tower blocks to secure both sides of the wreath rings. And I'm gonna fill in that gap with hot glue. So that'll help with the immediate bond. Obviously I was using wood glue. That's going to be the long-term hold. I had tried to use those clamps that you might've seen in the picture before to hold everything together, but because of the angle, it it was causing more issues <laughs> than it was helping. So uh, I ended up using the hot glue instead to just get things secured. And then I'm using extra wood glue along the base here just to kind of fill in any gaps. You can see me filling in between the wood um, tumbling tower blocks. And once it was all dry, it was nice and secure. So I have three little sets of fairy lights. I'd gotten these off of Amazon as well in a pack. I think it was a dozen in the pack that I got. These are also in my Amazon store. And I am just going to wrap and wrap and wrap them around all three rings. So as I wrapped, I kind of squished it down a little bit so that my lights weren't spread too far apart. And I was just doing it, you know, by eye. I did not measure anything. So you can make these as close together or as far apart as you wish. But I used one of these strands for each of the three rings. And there it is all set there. Now I have a bunch of flowers from my stash. These are from the Hobby Lobby and I've had these for quite some time, but I'm going to kind of form it up around the ring. And I'm just getting those little light um, battery packs out of the way, but trying to figure out how I want the flowers to sit here. And then I'm going to trim off that long stem and I will use, um, some hot glue to secure it. So here I am with my wire cutters, trimming that off. I realized afterwards that I had cut off the greenery that I wanted. So I do end up using that greenery later, but then used a good amount of, of hot glue to secure that down. You can see that the greenery I 
kind of glued right back down on there. <laughs> so I did the same exact thing with the other side. I just used a complementary color with the flowers. And again, just a lot of hot glue, making sure that this isn't going to be going anywhere. And now you can see I have lamb's ear that I'm getting ready to place down. This is from Amazon. I got this recently in an Amazon haul and I used two bundles on either side and just kind of fanning them out from the middle. Again, lots of hot glue usage here. Now I have, these are from the Dollar Tree actually, these little yellow hydrangeas. And I've pulled them apart as I do with most of my picks and I am tucking them in. I am not gluing them down just yet. I am arranging them in between the leaves of the lamb's ear trying to see how I want them and once I have them where I want them I'm going to come back in with some hot glue and just make sure that all of those little stems are secure. So here I am with the hot glue and I will just make sure that I hit the base of each of those little stems of the hydrangeas so that they don't go anywhere and they're all set. Now I have some ribbon. I believe I picked this up at the Hobby Lobby a while ago. I am sure that I got it after the Christmas holidays on clearance. It is a Christmas ribbon, but I thought that this, this could also work for spring just because it's such a pretty green color and with that gold running through it, I just thought it was really pretty and that it would look nice with this. So I measured off enough to create a large loop and I'm going to be again mirroring this on both sides so I um, also uh, cut a second length of the same, the same length. I'm having trouble with my words tonight, you guys, as I record this, so bear with me. But I've got my loops that I'm creating here. And then I wanted to create a smaller loop that was going to sit in the middle of each. And I did the same thing again. I need two of them, so I'm measuring it off. As you can see, I am not um, actually measuring with a ruler or anything here. I'm just eyeballing it. But I used a little bit of hot glue in the center, just a dab of it to secure my loop. You can see just a little dab because I want to be able to squoosh the, the center of this together in a minute. So I don't want too much uh, glue interfering with the ability to smoosh the ribbon if you know what I mean. So I went ahead and secured my big loops and this is just going to make it easier um, for me to work with this when I take another length of ribbon to, to bring it all together. So I am layering my loops. I'm taking an extra length of ribbon that I had cut off, tucking it through the middle of that little loop and around the bigger loop and I'm going to just tie it off in the back and just kind of play with it as you go. When you first pull this tight, it's going to get a little wonky and you just have to work with it. Um, pull it tight a little bit slowly, so a little bit at a time, and just work with your ribbon so that it doesn't get all kind of jammed up um, underneath your knot. So once I had it the way I wanted it, I went ahead and finished the knot. I pulled the little tails forward. I'm making sure that my bow is the way that I want it getting that all fluffed up and then I'll just go ahead and make sure that it looks the way that I want it to in the center of my piece here. I have not glued it down yet. I am, I created my other little bow and I'm just making sure that everything is going to get nice and covered. And then I came in with my hot glue. I'm very visual. So I like to see things in place before I commit <laughs> because that way I can change things if I decide that I don't like them the way that they are. So that's why a lot of times you will see me um, looking at things and then making adjustments and then committing with the glue. So once I had them glued down, you saw I dovetailed the ends on the other side. So I'll go ahead and dovetail the ends on this side as well and just kind of tuck them in and make it pretty. And then this one is going to be all done. I let me know what you think of this one. And now it's time for a shout out timeout. 
We have just one shout out today. Cute Janet. These are so sweet. Thank you for sharing. I would love to give you a shout out as well. If you have interest, please send me an email at craftedbycory at gmail.com. DIY number three. All right, this is a trash to treasure somewhat. That box used to have wine in it a long, long time ago. It's been in my stash for years and years, and I'm finally excited to be doing something with it. I also showed you I've got some more fairy lights that I've set to the side, and I have three Dollar Tree vases. I've got my antique wax by Waverly here that I've pulled out along with a baby wipe. And I'm gonna go ahead and apply this all over my little wood box. And I love the way that the grain comes out on this. I think it's so super pretty. And a little bit of this wax goes a long way. So just getting a little bit on my baby wipe. I'm really just using what's on the lid of the antique wax container. And once it's all done, I set it aside to dry. And I'm going to work on getting this cleaned up. So I've got my rubbing alcohol and these have just been sitting in my stash for a while. So I wanted to make sure that they were nice and clean. I'm going to be dropping them into my box. And now I've got all of this extra greenery that I've been saving. So when I pull my picks apart, I also had that moss. I ended up not using it. I thought I was going to use it at first, but I, I didn't. So you can disregard that. But whenever I pull my picks apart, I tend to end up with a lot of extra greenery and I save it and now I'm gonna be using a whole bunch of it. And I am using this to not only make it pretty, but it's also serving to secure my vases in place without glue so that they don't clank together. Now I've got these blue and white hydrangeas that I think are absolutely beautiful and I'm just going to cut them all apart. <laughs> and I started to put it in a little bundle. I thought I was going to use wire. I was like, no, that's not going to work. So I went to my stash, grabbed these little styrofoam balls and I am going to stick these all into the balls, but realized that I had too much of a stem on there since I'm not going to be bundling them and I'm going to be using the, uh, the styrofoam instead. So I cut these down. I had maybe about a half an inch left of my little stems. Tucking these in all over the top half of the little ball. And I'm alternating colors with the blue and white and just getting it to a place that looks pretty to me. And I can drop it right on top of my vase. And these are like little floating flower balls. I think this is so fun. So now I am going to go ahead and attach my, um, well, I'm going to unravel my fairy lights, tuck them down inside the vase here, um, and then I'm going to be securing it to the bottom of the styrofoam ball. Now I decided that the lights were sitting a little too low, so I'm going to fill the bottom with some more greenery. And then I'll go ahead and tuck my lights back in. Now, if I had to do this over again, I would have cut my styrofoam balls in half and made sure that the bottom part was the flat part so that I could more easily adhere my little battery packs to the styrofoam balls. It would have been a little bit easier. It all worked out, but again, if I had to do it again. If I had it to do again, that's what I would have done. So I'm just going to go through and do the same thing with the other two, getting them all set, dropping the greenery in, dropping in my fairy lights. And these are wired and so they kind of take shape, if you will. And I'm just kind of bunching them up with no rhyme or reason. It's all very random. Now you'll notice I am applying the glue to the side that does not have the screws on it. That's because if ever we need to change out the batteries, we want to be able to access them. So that's why I'm doing it that way. And here is the third one, just getting that applied. And we are going to be all set. I am dropping that in, fluffing it up. And we are all done. Let me know what you think. DIY number four. 
All right, I pulled this apart from a tray that I had created at one point. And so it's a, I think it's a cupcake holder from the Dollar Tree. I also had a, a Dollar Tree candle holder that I set aside. And these are two hanging plant baskets um, from the Dollar Tree. Now you can see I'm cutting out the circle on this one with my wire cutters and I'm going to try to straighten out these wires as much as I possibly can. And I think I may have seen Wendy from White Sparrow Living do something along these lines a long time ago. I, I'm pretty sure it was Wendy. So thank you, Wendy, for the idea. <laughs> um, but I'm just going to be creating a little cage with this. So I am turning over the ends of the wire with my needle nose pliers. Now, knowing what I know now, I probably could have used a better tool and actually Rich is going to step in in just a minute and help me out with a better tool for this. But I'm basically trying to connect these and I've got to bend that wire around the other basket. You can see me trying to do it unsuccessfully there. Um, and here is Rich to the rescue, and he's got his heavy-duty pliers where he's just coming in and crimping all of those little hooks onto the other basket for me. So I'm sorry we're a little off um, frame here, but hopefully you get the idea of what we were trying to do. So once we had it all put together, thank you, Rich. I love you. I went ahead and started piecing the rest of it together. A lot of hot glue on the candle holder here and then i did use some e6000 for that long-term bond i'm going to flip that over into the middle of the cake tray and i'm using this cake tray upside down you'll see but that's the way that i wanted it for this project went ahead and cleaned that up and flipped it over and you can see my little cage is going to sit right on top of there. I super glued that, but I'm going to paint the whole thing with my black spray paint. Here it is. You can see that the surface isn't real great because of what I had done with this thing previously, but it's okay because it's going to be completely covered up. So I've got my greenery. This I had picked up from Walmart a while back. Um, and uh, I went ahead and I decided I was going to start with this instead. Now, this is leftover pieces of a little broom, a twig broom that I had, and I am just cutting it all up. And it's formed the way that it is because I had bent it and stuck it in my little drawer for a while and it just kind of stayed in that shape. <laughs> so I am going to, once I've got this all cut down, build a little nest. So I'm just kind of taking a few pieces at a time and trying to randomly layer them over each other on the ends. I, I don't know if I'm making any sense at all, but I'm hopefully based on what you can see me doing, <laughs> you, you get what I'm trying to say. But just building a little bird nest in the middle here. And as it started to come together, it was just making my heart happy again. So lots of hot glue in the middle here. And this was to give it a little bit, um, what's the word I'm looking for? I, I want it to not fall apart. And I also want it to stay in the middle of the tray. So once it was all nice and cool, I was able to put my bird on, dropped my little um, cage down over. And I did use a little bit of hot glue at the points where the cage met the base. And that was just in three little points where the hooks normally um, fall in line for the, the little plant holder. <laughs> so once I had that secure, I went ahead and grabbed my greenery. And now I'm going to tuck it in through the cage and into the little nest i'm just going to tuck it in and around for the whole uh circumference around the little bird and just dropping in my greenery and getting it all situated my bird is not glued down i didn't want to glue him down he is super sweet i have had him for quite some time i had gotten him from the hobby lobby 
and I just love him. <laughs> so then I came in with some other little picks. These are from the Hobby Lobby as well, and they are little beads with golden flowers, some more flowers from the Hobby Lobby. Again, all of these things I've had in my stash for years at this point so i'm really happy to uh to finally have a project to use them in so lots of little purple flowers and then i'm going to come back in with some yellow flowers as well in just a moment i guess there is a little bit of yellow with the purple as well it's not just all purple but look at how sweet this is coming out our little bird is kind of tucked in amongst all of the flowers and the greenery happy little bird so once I got all of these situated, we were all done. Let me know what you think. And here we are with the final reveal. Which one are you going to vote for? Okay, everybody, that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy the project, so please be sure to give me a big thumbs up. And remember, leave me a comment. Let me know which of the projects you think I should donate to the LAEF. And until the next time, be well, be kind, and make it a great day. Thank you so much for watching. Take good care. Bye.